Alright guys, in this video we are going to be having a very interesting conversation about some information that has come out about the PlayStation 5 from AMD yesterday during their Financial Analyst Day presentation. Some very significant stuff we're going to be going over here. The number one thing we're really going to be focus on, focusing on is the fact that RDNA 2 for the PlayStation 5 is essentially confirmed and on top of that, this basically debunks that GitHub 9.2 teraflop leak that came out a while ago where for some reason a lot of people still believe that is in fact an accurate representation of what we are going to get specification wise inside of the PlayStation 5. And so we're going to be going over all of this information and it's just very interesting because it really proves a lot of people wrong. And so I don't want to make it sound like this is official confirmation coming from Sony themselves because obviously Sony hasn't done that yet. But when I tell you this is the closest thing we are going to get from official confirmation of anything, this is it because it's coming from AMD, the actual component supplier for Sony. And again, it's during a financial analyst day presentation. Uh, they're talking to their investors. I've actually seen some people claiming that AMD is lying or they're making things up or they're skewing certain things. And I have to let you know that that is absolutely incorrect and that line of thinking is just wrong because this is them presenting everything they need to, like their roadmap and information to their uh, investors. And they absolutely cannot lie at all. Uh, when it comes to that because they could get in a lot of trouble that would be bad news for AMD if they attempted to do something like that so with that being said if you think you're going to enjoy the video be sure to hit the like button really helps it out and make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss any future uploads but some of the most important things we need to focus on here and probably the most important thing is that AMD during this conference very subtly and I have to highlight the word subtly confirmed that the PlayStation 5 will in fact be using RDNA 2. I still see people trying to make it seem as though uh, because AMD didn't outright blatantly say the PlayStation 5 will be using RDNA 2. Obviously, they're not going to do that. They're not going to steal Sony's thunder. They're not, that's not their place to do that. But they are basically letting everybody know that the next gen consoles, plural, will in fact be using RDNA 2. Um, and, and I've seen people kind of running with this idea that no, they're not. They're still going to be using RDNA 1. But the truth of the matter is that. RDNA 1 doesn't feature ray tracing. Only RDNA 2 does. And there has been multiple confirmations at this point from Sony themselves talking about uh, having hardware-based ray tracing. In fact, I believe that's exactly uh, what they said. If you look at the actual RDNA 2 image presented by AMD, it says uh, that, um, you know, the, the Navi 2X, I believe is what they're calling it, the next-gen AMD Radeon GPUs feature hardware-based ray tracing and variable rate shading. And if you go back and look at the PlayStation 5 hardware features that Sony put up during their CES logo reveal, it says literally word for word, hardware-based ray tracing, the exact same thing. So if you can't really put two and two together here, I'm here to do it for you and let you know that yes, the PS5 will be using RDNA2 architecture. That is not GCN architecture. That is not RDNA1 architecture. And the important thing to understand here is that there's such a big emphasis for both of these consoles on ray tracing that we have to understand that even if you want to talk about the idea of Sony using RDNA1, you just can't at this point. Like, you literally can't because it's officially confirmed and I have to highlight the word officially this is not a leak this is not a rumor officially confirmed that Sony is going to have it's been confirmed I should say a hardware based ray tracing and only RDNA 2 offers that this is coming from AMD themselves so anybody who wants to still sit here and try to argue that it's going to be like you know it's going to be RDNA 1 you're just wrong at this point. And what's really interesting about this is if you look back at that GitHub 9.2 TFLOP leak that we got for the PlayStation 5, there's still so many people who believe that is accurate. That is an accurate representation of the specifications we are going to see inside of the PlayStation 5. This essentially debunks that. 
Okay, this essentially debunks that because the thing about that leak is it says it was, you know, using Navi 10 architecture, which is our DNA one architecture. Now we know that that's not the case. So anybody who was looking at that, any person who was hoping that that leak was legitimate, because for some reason they want to believe that, uh, you know, Sony's going to have some extremely underpowered console compared to what Microsoft's going to offer. Well, I'm here to let you know that that leak has been debunked. It's not legitimate. And I mean, it could have been legitimate at one point in time. And I believe it was actually, but it's pretty much been confirmed that that's essentially been scrapped if it was legitimate at all. And that's not what we're going to see in the final spec of the PlayStation 5. Now we have a quote here that comes directly from AMD themselves during this uh, presentation. And this is what they said. We have developed an all new hardware accelerated ray tracing architecture as part of RDNA 2. It is a common architecture used in the next generation game consoles. With that, you will greatly simplify the content development developers can develop on one platform and easily port it to the other platform. This will definitely help speed up the adoption of ray tracing. Now, you have to understand the significance of this quote, okay? First of all, they're saying consoles, and I assure you, you are completely wrong if you think for some reason when AMD says this, they're just referencing the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S, aka Xbox Lockhart. They are not, okay? They would not say something like this to reference an unannounced, unconfirmed console. They are talking about the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Make no mistake about that. But what they're also doing here is kind of, you know, when they talk about simplifying content development and how it will be easier for developers to uh, develop on one platform and easily port it over, they're talking about the uh, synergy basically between the next gen consoles and PC and the fact that both of these next gen consoles will be utilizing RDNA 2 it's just going to be so much easier for developers to port their games from PC over to these consoles and so that is another major reason why there's no way Sony wouldn't have RDNA 2 architecture because if they didn't they would be in trouble and Sony's not going to allow that to happen okay so I really you know <laughs> I don't know what to say to people anymore who are still trying to run with this idea that the PlayStation 5 is going to be an extremely underpowered console, it's going to be weak, it's not going to be anywhere near what Microsoft is offering with the Xbox Series X. I feel like at this point the only people who are continuing to run with that narrative are people who were, you know, toxic fanboys and don't want to see the PlayStation actually be a good console. I think that what Microsoft is doing with the Xbox Series X is awesome. I think that it's going to be a great console, and I think that any Xbox fan or any gamer who's looking to upgrade to a next-gen console, if that's what you choose to go with, you're going to get a really powerful machine, and it's going to be capable of a lot of awesome things. But we're seeing just more and more evidence, you know, sprout up here. And this isn't even evidence. I don't know why I'm, I'm talking about it like that. This is, again, closest thing to confirmation. The number one argument you're going to see from people is that, well, AMD didn't outright say that the PlayStation 5 is being powered by RDNA 2. Like, they didn't explicitly say it in, like, a quote, you know, they, they didn't say, again, the PlayStation 5 is an RDNA 2 architecture. They're not going to do that. They're not going to step on Sony's toes that way. If this is in fact, well, I mean, it is true, but if the PlayStation 5 is in fact running on RDNA 2 architecture, you better believe Sony wants to be the one to announce that when they talk about the PS5. You better believe that Mark Cerny is going to be the one to talk about that when they reveal the PlayStation 5. AMD is not going to step on their partner's toes by basically coming out ahead of them and announcing something that obviously they know that Sony wants to save. But this is the this is the easiest way for them to relay um, to anybody who is using their common sense here to their analyst or not their analysts, their uh, investors that look our latest technology is being utilized by both of our partners here, and it's going to be a big deal. And something else, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier in the video, and I apologize for waiting so long 
to mention it, something else that was mentioned and really emphasized on is that RDNA 2 is going to have a 50% increase in performance. So basically you have GCN and then you have RDNA 1. And RDNA 1 is already a 50% boost from what GCN is. Now GCN is the architecture that the PS4 and the Xbox One are utilizing right now or in. And so when you look at RDNA 2, that's a 50% jump from RDNA 1 itself. And so it's, it's extremely efficient, it's cutting edge, it's powerful, there's absolutely no way the PS5 isn't using RDNA 2. And again, the fact that hardware accelerated ray tracing continues to be a major focus for the next generation from both Sony and Microsoft, I really don't understand how anybody can honestly continue to sit here and believe that the PlayStation 5 is going to be an RDNA 1, but even worse, continually referencing that github leak that has essentially been debunked at this point so yeah i you know it's looking to me like both of these consoles are going to be on the same level or very close to one another and the difference will be completely negligible ultimately at the end of the day in terms of what they're able to do and what they're able to offer and what people will see ultimately at the end of the day you know i mean we just got that ghost of tsushima trailer yesterday which was phenomenal and if there's something that that reminded me of is that oh wait a second power doesn't really mean everything it's talent okay that game looks amazing like it looks like it's borderline a next gen game and it's going to be on the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PS4, and it looks amazing. So, you know, just hearing that both of these consoles are going to be extremely powerful is very exciting, and it tells me that there's going to be some really awesome stuff happening next generation and what developers are going to be able to do with this new power and this, you know, just the size and the scope and the scale of some games we're going to see is probably going to blow our minds. So, I thought it was really important to make this video because we have covered so many leaks and so many rumors and there's been so much back and forth about what architecture the PS5 is going to be in and what, you know, listen, I won't sit here and tell you that you should walk away saying PlayStation officially confirmed this because they didn't. However, you can walk away from this looking at it as this is, you know, we are on the cusp of Sony pretty much just coming out here. And revealing that yes the PlayStation 5 is a very powerful and very capable console and it will be an RDNA 2 but at the very least th listen anybody who's sitting here saying that the PS5 is gonna be an RDNA 1 you just you seem kind of ridiculous at this point so that's gonna do it for the video guys I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative or at the very least a little bit entertaining and if you could do me a favor let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below again be sure to leave the video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that but until next time guys take care